So this is a 50 metre kick for James Hook. He's kicked four of the seven on offer this evening. His longest kick to date this season, 43 metres. All eyes on the Welshman. It's climbing, it's climbing, it's climbing! He's nailed it! Glory for Hook! Glory for Gloucester! You could not make it up! Pandemonium at Kingsland! No, Hookie, that was an amazing kick. Um, it was a nail-biter of a game that a few fans will forget in a hurry. It's the end of the game. We're trailing. You've only kicked four out of seven. This is a long-range attempt. How do you control your nerves in such a, such a situation? Uh, yeah, it was pretty nervous, I've got to be honest. I can mention I missed a few few kicks before that, so, um, and obviously Chris Aston, we thought had scored and we'd lost the game without even having any points from the game, so, we had a bit of a win behind this, so I think Billy was there, who's obviously got a big kick as well, so I just stepped up and prayed to God, really. Thank goodness he was listening on that evening. Looking back now, how important was that kick for Gloucester season? I think, yeah, it was, it was quite important. I think the week before we beat Exeter away, which was pretty big for us. Um, we started a little bit of momentum in our season, and you know, we undefeated the King's Own in 2015, so hopefully we can keep that going as well. Great, it was the start of a, a winning streak, and hopefully it will continue for the rest of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, James Hook. Good, good now, Laurie, um, You've come over as a coach, but did you ever feel it would be this that made such a big impact in terms of your move to Gloucester? Do you see yourself as a little bit of a trendsetter? No, look, I, to, I was really hoping it would be my ability to coach that would make the difference, but uh, as opposed to what looks, but uh, I guess you take what you can get. Brilliant, good stuff. How did you, we heard David speak about the trip out uh, by Steve uh, to discuss the move. Um, of course, you heard a lot about Gloucester, but did it really make that big impact? And, and what was that impact when you came over here and really experienced Gloucester for the first time? Well, it, it, I mean, it really is a good rugby culture. It's, it's a good sporting culture in the UK, all up and I've got, I've spent three years at Munster and, and they're a similar sort of rugby community, aren't they? They're wonderfully supporting their team, make uh, unbelievable noise at Tayman Park. So I'd experienced that there. You know yourself that in super rugby at the moment, particularly in Australia, that we probably struggle to deliver a crowd and we certainly struggle to deliver atmosphere. So to come to a place like King's Home where, where like the noise uh, when the players do their warm up is, is really spine tingling. It's uh, a wonderful experience. No, it certainly is. And uh, it's one of those memories as a player you will always have um, doing that warm up lap and, and getting this, this, the crowd and the, you know, the shed faithful really behind you. And um, it's one of those things you'll take for, with you, you know, really, when, you, when the boots are really going dust. The season's not over. Um, we've got a couple of weeks in front of us. Up till now, what would be your highlight of the season so far? Look, I, I mean, you can look at uh, some individual games and, and some, some of them have been looked at, like our, our victory over Saracens. Uh, I, th I thought our, our semi-final win over Exeter was an outstanding performance. Uh, obviously, to, to, to win the Challenge Cup, uh, most enjoyable. But I, I think, when, what, I guess what I take greatest uh, enjoyment is, is, is I think we really have developed as a team. And I, I look at a lot of the players and, and who have 
you're playing some tremendous football, particularly at the back end of the season. So if you only judge yourself on wins and losses, then, then it's, it is a very cutthroat business. So I guess as a coach, whilst that's what you get judged on externally, what you're actually looking at is, yeah, where are the are we making improvements? Are we enjoying what we're doing? Are we being, are we better people? Are we better players? Are we a better team? Are we providing you know, what people pay good money to come and watch. So I, I try and judge myself on those things as opposed to enjoy the wins, hate the losses, but but more look at, at uh, are we getting better and, and try and judge ourselves on that. Great stuff. Thank you very much. We look forward to see the team improve, not just in the next two weeks, but also next season. Ladies and gentlemen, Laurie Fisher. Charlie, always great to score a hat-trick. Even better to score it on your 150th game for the club. What can you remember of that night? Yeah, I think it's as the, as the commentator said there on the telly, you probably couldn't have scripted it much better. Um, obviously, it was a massive occasion for me being my 150th, and I was glad it, it was at home, because actually the following week it was Woody's 250th, and we were in the, in the, somewhere in the middle of Oyenhax. So, um, you know, I was quite lucky that it was that fixture, and, yeah, it was just a hugely uh, proud day for me and I got to lead the team out, which is something I've never never had to do before, so that was a real privilege. And, um, and then, yeah, with, in terms of the game, with, with the hat-trick and stuff, as I said, you just you, you couldn't have written it. So, Great stuff. And uh, what are you feeling towards the next couple of weeks and potential inclusion into Europe for next season? Well, it's a massive opportunity for us. Um, you know, it's kind of... The format's obviously obviously not ideal, but I think we, we've really the boys are really really you know ready for these two games, and it's it's kind of as I say it's a tough one because you look around and all the other teams seasons are finished and uh, and we're kind of in, in training and so we've got the dinner now and everyone will be home in bed early tomorrow and then we got we've got training so but I think yeah we're obviously lucky we've got the two home fixtures and it's a fantastic opportunity for us to, to get to the Champions Cup which we obviously wouldn't have had given our uh, our league standing so. I think we'll really, uh, really attack these two games, and you know I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm sure everyone else is. And we're not going to make our season two weeks longer without getting anything out of it. So, great stuff. Now, as we had the race course, and we, I'm pretty sure there are a couple of punters in the room. A dead-on race between you and Johnny May. Where should we put the money? <laughs> No, Johnny's a good friend of mine, so uh, we, we, we've got a kind of truce. We don't answer these sort of questions, so I'm over here, Johnny. <laughs> Great stuff, Charlie. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to see many more appearances in the Gloucester shirt, but more of, a, more of those spectacular ties. Thanks very much. Cheers.
Wonderful memories. Billy, now looking at that, looking back at the game, there was a, a stage in the match where it just looked like it might be slipping away from us. Um, what did you and the team do in that second half to pull it all back together and get the wonderful win? Um, went back to 14 men, that helped. Um, well, yeah, going down to 13 was, um, it's just momentum shifts in a game, you knew it was going to be tough and um, you know, full credit to Edinburgh, they came out in the second half and really took it to us. I think all of us involved were pretty disappointed how we probably performed in the second half. I think we could have pushed on and made it easier for ourselves, but that's what finals are about. And um, boys dug deep, and um, I think for the last five minutes of the game, the forwards kept the ball for the whole time, and a few of the backs tried to join in and hit some rucks, and um, Greg hit the ball dead at the end, and um, you know we won the, won the cup, and it was a massive night for everyone involved. Great. We all saw the reactions when that final whistle went. What was it like to lift the first or that trophy, first bit of silverware in a while? How, what did it feel like? Yeah, it was, it was amazing um, for everyone involved um, in the club and for all the guys that have come to the club this year and all the coaches and what the guys have alluded to earlier. It was massive for us to get a bit of silverware at the end of the year. I think um, from losing by 50 points at the start of the year to the Saints was you know, a huge hiccup in the start of the season and um, none of us probably imagined that would be, you know, going 100% in Europe and winning every game and lifting the trophy. So um, to potentially get into the um, Champions Trophy, I think it's what it's called next year, um, is massive for us in these next two games. So um, we enjoyed the evening and enjoyed the next 24, 48 hours after that. And, um, you yeah, know, it, it was a massive night for everyone involved and um, the stoop it pretty much turned into King's Home and it was massive support down there and it, it did make the difference. Yeah, job's not quite done and please everyone show our support and uh, wish the boys all the best of luck with the next couple of weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy 12, please.